Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, did we have a time last night? Amen. And if you were here, you are in for a treat. Mother, praise God. God bless you. Amen. And uh, wow, it was just spectacular. Uh, the spirit of the Lord was in this place, and we are expecting the same on tonight. Amen. So we want to welcome you here to West Angeles, a church on the move for God. And we are excited about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, praise God. We're going to start off with prayer by Elder Bradley. Next, we will have scripture reading by Rochelle Collins. And the praise and worship team will come after that. Amen. Amen. Come in that order. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Angeles. Would you all please stand? How many of you tonight have been through something in your life? Just give the Lord a hand. Please wave your hand. You know that God has brought you here for a reason. Amen? You know that you could not have done this thing by yourself. Am I right? You needed the love and the appreciation of someone. Do you know that someone prayed for you? And God was looking down on you the whole time that all this was going on in your life. You know what I would like for you to do as we get ready to pray? Hold someone's hand that is next to you. Hold their hand. And think about all the trials and all the tribulations that they went through in their life think about why you are here and why God saved you from a life of sin and shame think about all the troubles that you went through and then magnify the Lord once you release hands once the prayer is done amen but don't think about yourself when you're holding that person's hand think about them amen let us pray Lord we thank you tonight for all your many blessings. Lord, we know that the hand that we hold on tonight, they could have been dead. We could not have been here on tonight, but for your grace, but for your mercy, but for your love. We thank you for loving us, Lord, and saving us, Lord, from drug and alcohol and all the abuse that we were involved in. God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are an awesome God, and we just want to praise you. Lord, as we touch that person's hand, Lord, whatever their need is, Lord, meet it right now in the name of Jesus. If it's healing, meet it in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that they're going through, whether it's finances, Lord, oh God, whatever the situation is in their life or in their family's life, God, you take care of it right now. You are a deliverer, Lord, and you have set us free. So we just want to loose our hands and praise you right now. Let us exalt the name of the Lord and glorify his name for all his many blessings in your life. God, you are an awesome God, Lord, and we want to bring down the praise on tonight. Oh, God, we are not going to leave here the way we came in Jesus' name. God, save tonight, deliver tonight, set free, Lord. Oh, God, we are on the mountain for you, God. We are witnesses for you, Lord. So we want to give you the praise. Bless the preached word on tonight, God. Oh, God, touch some soul on tonight, whether they're in this building or whether they're viewing by internet, God. Do something for the choir that's singing and for the minister that is preaching, God. You are awesome, and we praise you and thank you for all your many blessings, God. The anointing is here. Holy Ghost, go up and down the aisles and touch each and every person here on tonight. God, we praise you right now. Thank you for Bishop Blake and allowing this meeting on tonight. Thank you for Elder Ron Simmons, Lord, who is the head of this, Lord, and everyone that's involved, God. We ask a special blessing on them. And so we end our prayer tonight by giving you the highest praise of hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name.
Praise the Lord. Hi, my name is Rochelle Collins, and I am a blessed delivery recovering addict. I have 26 years of sobriety. Amen. I will be reading the scripture. I will be reading from the International Version, Psalm 85, 6 through 9. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God, the Lord, says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. But let them not turn to their folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Blessed be a reading to his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you ready to worship the Lord tonight? Amen. I'm excited to be here tonight. Would you greet somebody next to you? Tell them I came ready to worship the Lord tonight. Come on, greet somebody. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glad to be in his house tonight. Come on, put your hands together. It's your easy song. It goes like this. Oh, Lord, we praise you. 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 Help me say it tonight. We praise you. Say, oh, Lord, we praise you. Everybody say, we praise you. Say, oh, Lord. you oh lord we thank you we praise you have me say oh lord we thank you oh lord we praise you around in the days but tonight I stand before you with nothing but praise say oh Lord, oh, Lord we praise everybody say we praise say oh Lord we praise we pray you praise we give you the glory oh, oh Lord, Lord. We praise say oh Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord we praise everybody We give you glory for who you are. We give you praise for all you've done. We give you glory for who you are. We give you praise for all you've done. And help me say we give you glory for who you are. We give you praise. We give you praise.
some of the day, some of the challenges we may have faced, or even if not, there were any challenges, but let me just take a few moments and forget about those who are around you, and just have a private moment right where you are with you and your Savior. Would you lift your voice tonight and let them know how much you appreciate him? If it were not for his grace, if it were not for his mercy, we'd all be consumed tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for being long-suffering with us. Thank you for being the God of a second chance. We lift our voice in worship and adoration to you tonight. Come on, believers, help me lift your voice tonight. Father, thank you. If we are anything, it's because you made us. If we have anything, it's because you gave it to us tonight. So we worship you. You deserve the glory yes, and the honor. Yes. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory, you deserve the glory. And, the honor. and the honor. Come on, believers, lift your hands tonight. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. And we bless your holy name. Praise your holy name. You are great. You are You do me recall. Yes, Lord. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. Come on, take those few moments again. Come on, you deserve the glory. Help me say you deserve. You deserve. 
Come on, make this personal with you and your Savior. So we lift our hands. And we bless your holy name. You Just clap your hands, but while your hands are clapping, lift your voice. Father, we honor you tonight. We honor you tonight. It's because of you that we live, we move, we have our very being tonight. We magnify you tonight. We glorify you tonight. Oh, yeah. a hand. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Charles E. Blake and First Lady, Lady Mayo Blake, to West Angeles. And whether this is your first, your second, or your 40th time, you are always welcome. Amen. I have a few special announcements to make this evening, but I want to start by saying I went to a funeral today 
I've never been to a funeral in a mausoleum, you know, the wall. And when the service was over, they cranked that thing up and pushed that coffin in the wall, and it made that sound. And I thought, oh, I'd never heard anything like that. And this woman suffered from cancer. But I'm thinking of all you young, able-bodied, God called, has something special for you that have blocked your own path with alcohol and drugs. And thank God he has freed you. Hallelujah. 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 So we are not standing at that wall watching your body go in. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And on the subject of substance abuse, we have meetings right here at West Angeles on this campus every Friday night. This is our meeting night, y'all. <laughs> yes, it is. But we are all here together to praise his holy name and to bless him and to thank him because it is Jesus who has freed us. Our meetings are at 7 p.m. We have the substance abuse recovery group on one side and then we have the tough love, the family ministry on the other side, family support ministry. Because, you know, for all of you that have been plagued with addiction, your families are going through it too. And we need a place where we can come and talk and share and get it out of our systems. But the bottom line is we got to get Christ in us and let him do the work. Amen. Amen. There is a flyer in the foyer uh, that will remind you of the meetings. If you don't have a meeting or you want an extra meeting, come on out and join us on Friday night. And then uh, this ministry, Free in One, is a part of our counseling center. There are counseling center brochures also out in the lobby. And our counseling center is, uh, you know, I've, I've never been a part of a church that has a counseling center. That's an awesome thing. That just lets you know how much our bishop loves and first lady loves the people in the community, the people of God. Our counseling center is a member of the National Christian Counselors Association, and they offer counseling to assist in paving the way to spiritual, emotional, and physical wholeness in Christ Jesus. Amen. And tomorrow, we are taking it to the streets, a revival with the Union Rescue Mission under the leadership of our coordinator for downtown Skid Row Ministries, Elder Dennis Bullock. There he is standing right there. We're going to be at the Union Rescue Mission tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Dispensing food, water, clothing, hygiene kits, bottles, and the word and praise and worship to bless the people that are down right now, but they're not going to be down forever. Amen. Amen. And then we have a breakfast. Free in one. There are these little cards out there in the lobby, in the foyer. Free in one is hosting a breakfast. Miracle in sports, it's called. And we will be honoring three very special women who have really been soldiers on the battlefield. Hallelujah. And they are Rochelle Collins, who's over there. Yes. They are Regina Fair, who is right there. Yes. And Lanita Hamilton. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And if that wasn't enough, then we're going to have special guest speakers, Daryl Jackson, former pitcher of the Minnesota Twins, and Marcus Johnson, a former UCLA, UCLA Bruin, and <laughs> a five-time All-Star in the NBA. Also, the, you will see, it's a gold color out there, a paper like this, that talks about classes that are being offered through the Free and One Ministry at Bethel AME Church, Monday, August 28th through Friday, September 1st, First class is working with the alcoholic and drug addicted person. And the second is how to help the family member find peace and freedom while that friend or loved one is affected by drugs and alcohol. So for more information, there's a flyer out there for that. And finally, prayer. Free in One has a prayer line. And yes, we pray for all of you. We pray for the facilitate facilitators. Wave. 
Look at all those facilitators over there. Amen. We're praying for the facilitators because we've been where you are, but the Lord has freed us, and now we've come back to help you to find that same freedom. And we're praying for our community at large. So at 6.45 a.m., Monday through Friday, the conference call number is 641 715 3272 and the access code is 688990 pound and if you don't remember all of that that was just given guess who's the operator of the church <laughs> amen just give me a call and i will give you that information and lastly i want to say our uh, leader for free and one elder ron and his wife yolanda have written books Ron's Understanding Christian Drug and Alcohol Recovery. Hallelujah. That will be available in the foyer for you to purchase. Recovery Tower by Ron Simmons, a dynamic book, truly God-inspired. And then Understanding Codependency from the family side of it, written by Yolanda Simmons. Yes, and those will all be available in addition our guest speaker tonight, Pastor Wes Morgan. Let's hear it for him. Amen. Amen. He will also have product out in the lobby for your purchase. God bless you, and let's enjoy this service. Uh, pastor Wes said this is going to be a Holy Ghost party tonight. Let's party. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give Sister Sutherland uh, a hand. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have some uh, special guests here on tonight. We have some recovery homes here. Amen. Amen. And if I miss you, just let me know. Right now we have, the, is the Cannon House here? Amen. Amen. Uh, Alcohol Center for Women. Woo, woo. Fotep? Amen. Okay. Amen. Fair opportunity to change. Amen. Alcoholism Center for Women. So that one's on there twice. So whoever wrote this, that's probably one of you guys did that, huh, Jim? Health Right 360. Amen. The same thing. Okay. The Phoenix House. All right. Same thing. All right, you guys. The Mission. There you go. Amen. You, you guys are our special guests. We thank God for you guys coming out. Hazel House. Amen. My wife was like, I was like, okay, amen. Is there anybody else here that I missed? Okay, well, praise God. So I don't get in trouble. Amen. We want to welcome you here, and, and, and we are truly blessed to have each and every one of you here. We thank God for one of the greatest pastors in the world that allows us to worship together because he has a heart for the addict alcoholic for suffering people for hurting people that's his heart and he couldn't be here tonight but he did send this and I'm going to share this with you it says he is honored to welcome you all to West Angeles for this time of power prayer and praise with Pastor Wes Morgan. Amen. And please don't think that this is the only time that you can come here. You are welcome anytime at West Angeles Church of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't want you to really take that lightly. 
I am also the founder of Free In One Drug and Alcohol Program, and, and God gave me an idea to, to attack the drug and alcohol problem in our community and everywhere. When I found out that Satan was trying to kill me just because of where I come from, the gang life and all of that, you know, it was like, what? Wait a minute, he trying to kill me. Well, what I, what I was taught, if you're trying to kill me, I need to get you. And, and so as a babe in Christ, I, you know, I wanted to get him. I wanted to get him. But they told me I just couldn't get him. They said the best way to, to, to hurt Satan, to injure Satan, to stop Satan is to go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. And so my whole thing was, okay, well, we're going to go to the church and we're going to train the church on how to do this. And I just thought everybody was just going to come on board. But I found out that there were some pastors that really didn't want us in their church. And as a babe in Christ, at first it hurt, but then I said, well, you know what? I just, a matter of fact, I met with my bishop, and bishop said, just knock the dust off your feet and keep going. Amen? And so we found churches that were, that really wanted to get involved and get on the front line here. And some of those churches here, the facilitators, can all the facilitators please stand of all the different churches that are involved, amen, in the L.A. area. Amen. And so these churches are on the front line. We have directories. So if you need, ever need a meeting, and you, of course, you're going to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, and all the other anonymous programs. But the, we need to let you know that the church is on the front line too. Amen. And we have Christ-centered 12-step meetings all around L.A., and I know there are people that are looking online because Chicago called in and West Virginia called in and everybody is looking at this and they're excited about what we're doing because they also have free and one meetings in their states. And we're excited about that. Amen. And so I say all that to say that Bishop Blake is just the forerunner with this. He just lets us do so much and we thank God for him. Amen. Amen. So right now what we what I what we're going to do we're going to have a countdown. How many know what a countdown is? How many don't? Okay, well praise God. Amen. Well you're in for a treat. What we do is we count down and celebrate recovery. Amen. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this quickly, but we, we think it's important that people see people being delivered from drugs and alcohol. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to start off, and you guys can help me. I'm going to start off with about, uh, let's say, 40 years, and we're going to work our way back all the way down to one day, one hour, whatever. Amen? Amen. So when I say the year, I want you to stand up if that's your year or the month or the hour. Amen. 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 So we're going to start off with about 40 years. Is there anybody here with 40 years clean and sober? Over 40, 40 and over. All right. We're going to start there. Now, after I say the year, and the person stand up, we're going to do one clap. All right? So let's do it. 40. 39. So if that's your year, I want you to stand up. We're going to celebrate you. 38. 37. 36. Hallelujah. Amen. 35. 34. 33. 32. Amen. Thirty-one. Thirty. In the back. Good night. 
Amen. 29. Amen. 28. Yes. 27. 26. Yes. Amen. <laughs> 25. Yes. Yes. Big two five. 24. Amen. 23. 22. Amen. 21. A miracle, miracle. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> Amen. Sixteen. I see you. Fifteen. Amen. Fourteen. Thirteen, twelve, <laughs> eleven, hallelujah, glory, ten, nine, In the back, we see you. Seven, six, five, four. Amen. Three. Two. One year. <laughs> yes, sir. I remember my one year. Amen. Eleven months. Amen. Amen. Come on. This is a miracle now. Nine months. Eight months. That was a bad month right there, huh? Seven months. <laughs> Six months. Yes, sir. <laughs> Five months. Four months. Three months. Hallelujah. Two months. Yeah. One month. Twenty nine. Twenty eight. Where's my clap? There he is. Amen. 27, 
26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. You done stood up twice. Amen. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 days, 9, 8, come on now, 7, 6, Five, four days, three days, two days, one day. Nobody? Who was the last one that stood up? I think it was this young man over here. Amen? No? 17? Oh, no, 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 no. He, he done stood up a couple times. <laughs> hey Amen. How many days does he have? Oh, he just stood up? Oh, okay. All right, so I forgot which one was before him. 30 days? 30 days. 30 days? 30 days. Come on down. Man, 30 days. Let's give him a hand. This could be 30 days. This could be 30 days in the county jail, right? Hey, man, you 30 days clean and sober. Hey, man, we're going to give you some books. Hey, man, God bless you. Hey, man. Just enough. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. So right now, I, I'm going to call up Elder Bullock. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we serve an awesome God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the great I am, the magnificent God, and there's none like him. He's a God that delivers and sets free. Now give yourselves a hand. And I am a grateful, delivered, blood washed, born again, recovering, alcoholic addict. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. I, I was just thinking about it. It's, it's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. You know, this morning I got up and I offered the sacrifice of praise to my God. I said, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you that I'm clothed in my right mind. Now, Holy Ghost, what are we going to do today? Amen. I ain't leaving the house without the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He's good. He's good. It's offering time. And God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, give, give yourselves a hand. It's offering time. Glory to God. The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. I remember when I first came through those doors, I didn't have, I almost said that, amen. <laughs> I didn't have anything. 
Hey man, I used to put quarters in envelopes. But Bishop used to always say, come down and just tap the thing and trust and have faith that God will, will, will bring things to pass for you. And one day I sat down there and I remember people was getting up and giving $100 offerings. Now I'm telling you, $100 back in that day to me was like a million. Hey Amen. But I'd get up and come down to that altar and say, Lord, by faith, one day I'm going to get up and I'm going to be able to give $100. Well, I want to let you know it came to pass. I can give $100 now freely. Amen. I've been on the same job 21 years. And they told me I was unemployable at one time. Amen. Amen. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. So make ready your offering. Amen. We ask that if you can. Now listen carefully. We know how we are. Amen. If you can, give $25. But if you can't, don't worry about it. Do like I did. Tap that podium down there when you walk down here. Or give what you can. God looks at your heart. Amen. He looks at your heart. Can I get amen? amen? All right, all right. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Praise God. Please stand. Please stand. And I want you all to see yourselves in the future so you'll look much better than you look right now. Amen. If you had have told me I'd have been an elder in a church, amen, preaching the gospel, amen, I would have thought something was wrong with you. See, I didn't ask for none of this. This office is open up to me because when God set me free from heroin, cocaine, red devils, black beauties, upwards, downers, all around us, you name it, I could claim it. God did it. Say, what's your drug of choice? Whatever drug you got, that's my choice. Everything. Anything that'll get my mind at peace. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us bow our heads. Oh, most gracious Lord, we love you and praise you this evening. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, God, as we share in this offering ceremony, Lord God, that seeds will be planted. You will water it and it will grow. So, God, we thank you, God, that for those that don't have it, bless them according. Those that do have, give them increase, Lord, and we turn these blessings unto you in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Now, please face the sin aisles to my right and your left and the sin aisles to my left and your right, and the ushers will guide you from the rear of the auditorium. I want everybody to walk down here. If you just tap it, amen. Can I get a witness? Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessing and glory and honor. And Just wanna pray forever, forever and never and never for everything you've done. Oh, blessing and glory and honor, they are. Thank you, Jesus.
about tonight and we want to thank God for you we are on a mission amen we are on a mission to help our people that are struggling from for drugs and alcohol addiction amen it is an epidemic right now with meth and heroin crack cocaine PCP is coming back. Some people say it never left, they told me last night. I just want to share one thing before we, we move on. A lot of people ask me, they say, you got 36 years clean and sober, Ron. And they say, how did you, and I got this question asked today, how did you, did you just stop? Did you just go in? You know, I used to tell a story about how I went into the program because I was really afraid to tell the real story why I went in. Now, I had six dope houses, right? And so I was smoking like a broke stove. I could not stop, right? And I used to tell people, yeah, you know, I owed some dealers some money, and so I went into a program and, I, and, and because I was afraid and I thought I'd get my head together and Jesus found me in that program. But that, let me tell you what really happened because now that I work in it and been working in it for years and I'm seeing it happening all over the United States, all over our neighborhoods and it's happening to everybody. You let me know if it's happening did it happen to you but see at first I couldn't say anything because I was afraid people gonna think I was crazy I'm sitting in my last dope house right I'm sitting there with a sawed-off shotgun right here a 45 right here I trained Doberman pinchers so they in the yard right so nobody can get in nobody can get out and I'm losing it right because I cannot stop all of a sudden I'm sitting there I'm drinking I'm using and all of a sudden, out the corner of my eye, phew, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. I need to stop. I need to slow up. I need to slow up. <sighs> Drinking, get high. Grab the shotgun. 
I'm starting to see things. I'm starting to see shadows. Today I'm finding out people call them the shadow people. They coming out the walls. See, now I'm thinking I'm losing my mind, but I find out later as I got clean and sober, I found out that the drugs that we were doing and are doing is witchcraft. Witchcraft. And the drugs that we're doing open up a door to a world that you really don't want open. So just so I don't think that I'm the only one, is there anybody else in here that's seen it? Stand to your feet. If you've seen it, see there. See there. And none of you guys, stay standing, none of you guys could tell any of your friends that you saw these things because they'd have thought you was crazy. But that's, how, that's what Satan does. We are all starting, this is witchcraft with these drugs we're doing. And now, if you ever go downtown and you see people walking around like zombies, they're caught up and can't stop. Some people have lost their minds because they've seen some things that you're not supposed to see. Spielberg don't have nothing on some of the stuff we saw. These drugs is witchcraft and it's opening up this door. But let me tell you, when I got into that program, you can sit down now. When I got into that program, I met Jesus Christ as my savior. And guess what? He closed the door. So we beg of you, give yourself a break. Give yourself a chance at living. God didn't put you on this earth to be no dope fiend. He didn't put you on this earth to be caught up in that drug world. Let it go. But you are in a fight for your life because Satan don't want you to stop. Even though you want to stop, he don't want you to stop. So those so-called friends gonna now that you hearing this word, they gonna come and give you dope for free. That's nothing but the devil, and we letting you know right now. Amen. Amen. I wanted to share that with you because now you know. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. Our special guest tonight is just phenomenal. He's a singer, recording artist, pastor, director Wes Morgan, took the long and hard road in finding his calling in life. The son of a pastor, Joseph and Yolanda Morgan, Morgan spent his childhood traveling and singing gospel with his parents and siblings. At the young age of 10, though, he began using drugs and drinking, which led to several jail sentences and a lot of time in recovery centers before he finally emerged in this cycle of substance abuse. So he's one of us, amen. I'm going to let him tell his story because he does it better than this. After our praise team sings, amen, let's give them a hand, amen. I want you to stand and give our speaker a hand as he comes to the mic. Amen? God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited tonight to uh, hear Pastor Wes uh, to minister, and uh, this is something he's definitely passionate about. Something I've we followed him on Instagram. Actually, I met him the first time in New York with Sean Pennington. 
uh, we were put together for a reason. And, and uh, I tell you, this is a great man of God. You're in for a treat if you've not heard him. And uh, so tonight I'm going to sing this song, and then we're going to move right away very, very quickly. But a song that's uh, in my heart tonight, and, uh, and I pray you're blessed as you prepare our hearts for worship and uh, for the word of God. Would you just lift your hands for a few moments? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills. No. You can lift your voice all over the building. My eyes to the end. Yes, Lord. Oh, no.
paper with a magnifier glass. That's going to hit some of y'all on the way home tonight. And he would sit up there and cross his legs and he would take that magnifying glass and he taught me one day, I was just a boy, I remember standing there Grandpa, what's that glass you're using right there? What you looking, what you looking through? He said, baby, the closer you put that glass on the words of the newspaper. The more the words are illuminated. He said, what you do is when you want to get something bigger, you just magnify it. See, some of the, some, a, a lot of your problems would go away if you would quit magnifying them. You just, it's not that magnifying is wrong, you just magnifying the wrong thing. All right, that's it. I'm already, I got to teach already. Hold on, Eddie. You know I love you. That bro right there will put his fist in your back, won't he? Give it up for this worship team right here. All right, let me go back to what I was saying before I forget it. 
David said, the Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my... All right, go ahead and sit down. I got to teach. I, go, I got to go right into it. Just go ahead and sit down. I got to talk to you. I'm already off my notes right now. You better be ready. I'm getting ready to drop something on your spirit that's going to change your life. Listen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In other words, really? You got the wrong one, bro. And when I give you the backup on this Psalms, it's going to bless your socks off. You see, I already got mine off. He said, the Lord is a strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came up against me to eat up my flesh. He said, they stumbled and they fell. Now, the stumble would have been enough, but the fact. I feel the preach on me. I hope y'all ready for some preaching tonight. I came down your alley, Sally, tonight. He said, when the wicked came up against me, my enemies and my foes to eat me up and tear me up and tear me down and break me down and keep me from going into my destiny. Guess what happened? He said, they stumbled. Now, all the stumble did, the stumble would have been enough. If he'd have just caused them to stumble, Brother Ron, giving honor to the Lord and the head of my life and Bishop Blake. Y'all give it up for Bishop Blake and the First Lady. Some of the greatest people in the whole world. The stumble would have been enough because it would have given me a little time to get out in front of him. But not only did he cause them to stumble. Here's a word for some of y'all tonight. God said, I'm going to cause your enemies not only to stumble, but I'm going to give you 30 days to get your life together. I had no intentions of preaching this. Back off of me just a little bit. You're making me nervous. I can't help it when I start talking about the goodness of Jesus and what God has done in my life, I get a little bit of that indignation on me. You know what I'm talking about? Because I can't stand seeing people bound up and beat up and tore up and tied up. It's time to fight back. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to fight back, baby. You've been laying down long enough. Get up and fight back. Get your life. Find the rest of your life. Get your favor back. Get Now, when you read that scripture, listen to me. You got to get this word. I ain't even read my text. I got something totally different to preach. I just know I got to give this word to somebody in here. Listen to me. Now, when you look at that Psalms and you study it out, you trace it back to in Samuel when David, because David wrote the Psalms. But... He wrote it right after an incident in Samuel. He was out in the fight with all his boys. And the scripture says that one of the enemies, the opposing army, saw David was growing faint. See, you need to understand that the enemy knows he smells your weaknesses. Your weakness is put off a frequency and a scent. So Dave is out in this fight. He grows faint, Brother Ron. He gets tired. And one of these soldiers from across the way runs over there to take David's life. Well, one of David's soldiers and one of his boys saw this about to happen. And he ran over there and he killed the guy before he got to David. 
And then they went back to their camp after they fought the fight. Pay attention to this. This is going to bless your life. Went back to the camp. And all his boys sat down with David and said, David, no longer will you go out to war with us. Lest the lamp of Israel be quenched. Now, what they were trying to say was David was the be all end all. And that's when David wrote, he said, You need to understand something. Let me just tell you right now not the lamp, I'm just a reflection of the lamp. The Lord is my light. It's just I'm in the right position for him to reflect his life off of me. He said, but don't get it twisted. If you had not been there at the right time, at the right moment, in the right place, he said God would have sent somebody else to catch me. So don't start thinking just because you got a gift that you're going to give me a receipt with it. You ever met those people who helped you when you were down and they gave you something in the name of God and then they gave you a receipt with it and always remind you about how they was there for you and if it had not been for them that you would have never made it. David said, the Lord is my light. I don't know what you're tripping on, baby, but if you had not been in place, he would have used somebody else. So before you start blessing yourself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In other words, he said, and if you read on down, David says in the Psalms, he says, though an army encamp about me. See, you see how I just walked off that step right there. Some of y'all need to get y'all swagger back. Y'all lost your swagger. You lost your dignity. Just because you're going through hell don't mean you can have, you don't have to have no self-respect. You going through hell, baby, hold your head up and say, baby, this ain't nothing. If he put it on me, then he must think I'm good enough to take it. I ain't going to bow down. I ain't going to back up. I ain't going to snap. You, you. I cry in the church with you and fight you in the street, but ain't nobody going to take my swagger, baby. If I got to go through hell, I'm going to hold my head up. I'm going to prance through there. Baby, if you got some stilettos, put them on and prance down through it. you let no devil take your dignity your self-respect what in the world happened to you who hindered you you were running so well now you don't even know what to think about yourself you were asking somebody else to tell you about you make up your mind about yourself and then they will make up their mind about you better tell that devil baby you better get up out my house I will cut you with a dull knife In my house. This is my life. This is my favor. This is my sanity. This is my peace. This is my joy. This is my swagger. This is my money. You better get on up out of here. The Lord is my light. He said, though an army in camp about me, my heart shall not fear. You know why? Do you know why David said that? David said that because he knew the only reason there was an army encamping about him is that it was because God was setting up the stage to bless him in the presence of his enemies. He shall prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Listen, let me tell you something. You got to learn how to trust God so much that you give your enemies a front row seat. VIP, come on in here, baby. You about to see what the Lord's going to do in my life. I know you see me down. I know you see me crying. I know you see me out. I know you see me broke. I know you, I know you seen all that stuff, but guess what? God is about to do a new thing in my life. 
I got to go to my Bible. I got to go to my Bible. Just real quick, I got some I Choose to Worship t-shirts in the back. I'll be back there with y'all. I got a CD called Living. I wrote these songs when I was going through a divorce and was broken in my life, messed up, all kind of stuff. And just so it happened to be that I was living right in the middle of my crisis, so that'll be a blessing to you. Eleven years clean from cocaine, baby. Let me tell you something. I got something to say. Fifteen years sitting up in a hotel. I got something to say. And the people that don't like it, they can just poof, be gone. I'm done. I want to say thank you to all of the, the leadership of this church, the people who make this thing right, the people who've been praying and fasting, the mothers in here that's been making sure this atmosphere is right. Put your hands together and celebrate the intercessors. Always and forever, each moment with you. Just like a dream to me that somehow came true when I know tomorrow, this is my worship to him before I read my text, will be the same. Cause we got a life of love that won't ever change. And every day, love me your own. Held all my heart away with a smile. Come on now, just and take. I love you. I'll always love you, 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 you. I, I did this last night because I want you to understand some of y'all ain't used to all this churchy worship but you gotta learn that worship ain't nothing about nothing else but being in love with you when you love on Jesus I can ride down the road with my seat laying back on the mountain yes I If you got your Bibles, turn to Isaiah. I'm gonna love you for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. Isaiah chapter 43. I said Isaiah chapter 43. 
If you got it, say amen. And verse 18. Ah, I got a word for you tonight. Somebody say Isaiah. 43. 18. I'm going into 2000. I need y'all to travel with me tonight. I said Isaiah 4, 3, 18 is going to be your scriptures for your 2000. All right, that's it. Let me finish. Always love ever love you. I'll always love you. I got to get working on this word real quick, Brother Ron. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I want to talk to you a few nights, and you know how unorthodox I am. I appreciate y'all accepting me how I am. I told the Lord last time I got out of jail, I said, Lord, let me be whatever I want to be. And let me do it my own style, and I'll preach everywhere. Isaiah 43, 18, this scripture is going to revolutionize your life. Last night we talked about some good stuff. Y'all don't go nowhere, girls. It's going to be good now. You coming right back. Praise God. I'm not looking for places to preach. I'm here on an assignment. Last night we talked about the process. We talked about being shaped into the image of Christ. We talked about how the image, um, the, the key is shaped and cut into the image of the, to give us. And the whole reason we've been through what we've been through is to give us to our future, to our destiny, to whatever God has for us. And I'm a firm believer in that. You can search the scripture. It speaks it emphatically that even Christ went through it. Listen, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ went all over the earth when he was down here. He healed people, made mud pies, healed people's blinded eyes. He, he raised up people from their deathbeds. He did everything. But the moment, moment he stepped into the Garden of Gethsemane, he had an issue. And the, the, the biggest issue you will ever have is dealing with you, not nobody else. It ain't your daddy's fault. It ain't your mama's fault. Let me tell you something right now. If your daddy has not been there in your life, he was there at the most important time of your life, and that's when you was conceived. Get over it. Move on. Life don't wait on the moon, wounded. <laughs> Greatest revelation you can ever get is understanding that life is not waiting on you. Time is ticking right now while you sitting here thinking about doing something crazy. Life is moving away from you. And if you sit around and lick your wounds because somebody was not there for you and you blame them for everything that's wrong in your life, you're going to be sitting there by yourself one day because people don't always grieve a long time with you. Let me get to my text. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. This is a word for someone in here. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject, welcome to the new me. He says here, he says, do not remember the former things. I can't even hardly read this passage of Scripture without preaching word for word. He says, do not remember the former things, nor, the, nor consider the things of old. Everything that is old in your life should only be a memory. It should never be a place where you set up camp. I got to say that one more time. That's, that's tweetable right there. 
everything that is old in your life should only be a memory. It should never be a statue in your life. It should never be a fixture in your life because we read in our Bible that God takes us from glory to glory. He's always bringing out something new. And he says here, before I even read my text, I feel revelation on my mind right now. Before I even read my text, I hear him saying to me, quit comparing what I want to do with what I already did. What are you? Every time I get ready to do something else, you want me to repeat what I already did? God says, I'm not a God of repeats. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. But if I do something in your life, it ain't going to be like what I already did. Ain't no sense in doing that again. I already did that. Why you want me to do something else again? It's called arrested development. Psychiatrists will teach you this. It is a, it is a medical term, arrested development. It's when something happens in your life that arrests your mind and your emotions in such a way that you keep trying to repeat it over and over. And God says, I'm not going to do that again. Some of you got some relationships in your life and you, treat, you keep trying to hold on to those people and you know that jack leg boy ain't worth your time. And you keep on trying to recreate that same situation. It's over. It is over. It is over, and you need to let it go. Look at somebody next to you and say, baby, let it go. That ain't going to happen again. God wants to do something new in your life. He's not going to repeat what he's already done. Sitting around wasting your time looking on social media at somebody who could never make up their mind about you. You better let them, you better let them go. They will hold you up for your life and you'll be sitting up in the winter years of your life wondering what in the world did I do with my youth? What in the world did I do with my energy? You mean I wasted all my time and all my energy on that crazy situation when God wanted to do something brand new in my life? Hallelujah. Go back to my Bible. My Bible keeps me straight. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't care how great your life has been. What God wants to do in your life and your future will make your past experiences grow pale. He says, don't consider the things of old. I got to work this just for a minute more. It's like we think that God, because God did something in our life, that he could never do it anything better. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like when Job went to God, he's like, where were you when I flew the stars up in the sky? I mean, you looking at this little pitiful situation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my son. You looking at this little situation and look back over your life and how I've brought you through trials and tribulations and all kind of hardships. Do you think that I would bring you all the way to here and then just leave? Where were you? The very chairs you're sitting on right now. If I was deceased, your chair would decompose because in me all things consist. Where were you when I brought you into this world? You sitting up here questioning whether I'm going to get you out of this situation or not. I got a word for somebody in here, baby. That situation that's been intimidating you and harassing you, you need to kick that thing out the door and say, baby, I can't help it. I don't want to be here no more. I don't want to live this way. I'm coming out if I got to scratch my way out. If I got to fast my way out. If I got to pray my way out. I'm coming out. Look at here. My dad always taught me, he said, just preach the word, son. Just preach the word. He says, nor consider things of old. He said, come on, man, quit tripping. 
You think I ain't going to break you out of that situation? This ain't nothing but a setup. I've just been trying to get glory out of you. Oh, I wish I had time to preach in here tonight. Jesus was walking down the road with his disciples, and they saw a blind man. And the disciples, you know how church folk can be sometimes. They said, Lord, why is this man blind? Is it the sin of his mother? Is it the sin of his father? You know how church people are. Trying to figure out why are you in a situation. And Jesus, I love Jesus. He spoke up. He said, it's neither the sin of his mother or the father, but it's for the glory of God to be revealed through him. See, that's why we've been going through what we've been through. Because God handpicked us because he can trust us to go through trouble. Sometimes we are victimized for God's glory. I can't do it. I can't do it. I got to go somewhere else. He says, in verse 19, he says, behold. It's a powerful word right there. Behold means, and that's what some of us are going through right now. Some of you in here from New York, now you got to understand, I've spent more time in rehab, juvenile detention, some. County jails, I spend more time in jail than I spend at home, I think. <laughs> been, been arrested for armed robbery. I mean, I could go down the list. Listen, let me tell you something. I know where you at right now. But if you can stand the test, if you can walk through the process, if you can let God do his whole work in you, when he's done with you and you come out of that situation, you're going to be whole and lacking nothing. He said, behold. See, that's what's happening with us. We're having a behold moment. Behold means pay attention, baby. I'm about to do something on you. That's what behold. He said, behold. Somebody shout, behold. behold. Look at your neighbor, touch two or three people around you, just say, baby, there's about to be a behold moment in my life. You better pay attention, honey, because I'm about to turn this thing all the way around. I know you've been lurking and waiting and thinking I was going, going down on this situation, but I'm about to bounce back because there's about to be a behold in my life. Look at somebody and say, behold. Behold. He says, behold. Woo, this is good stuff right here, baby. Look at this. Look at somebody say, welcome to the new me, baby. He says, behold, I will do a new thing in you. He said, shall it not spring up on you? You ever been walking on a hot summer's day across some asphalt and step on a water gum. Some of you gonna be walking through life and your foot gonna stick down on something that you can't get off of you. God's gonna bless you with something that Ajax can't take off. He says, behold, in other words, when you look at that word and you really study the scripture, it means I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to spring up on you. You've been going through life and you've been depressed. You've been discouraged. You done lost ground. You done lost your finances. You done lost your marriage. You lost your kids. I don't care what it is you lost, but God said, I'm going to spring up on you and you ain't even going to know it's coming. It's like riding through an intersection and get T-boned. I'm going to bless you in such a way it's going to... Look at somebody and say, watch out. Oh, I feel like preaching tonight. Brother Eddie, I'm going to need you on that organ here in a minute. I'm going to need you on that organ in a minute. I feel the Holy Ghost move on me here in a second. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, he didn't have to bless me. The scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. 
How many of you know the difference between being called and chosen? difference between being called and chosen is chosen mean he handpicked you because he could trust you to go through some stuff and not cry and whine all through it. Some of you are going through some stuff right now. You just need to ride it out. It's going to be a little season, but be encouraged. You just need to ride it out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in. Just ride through the midnight shift. If nobody gives you a cup of coffee or a donut through the midnight shift, just keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. I press toward the mark and the high calling of God. Look at two or three people and say, baby, just ride it out. You're going to be all right. It's just a season. Don't, don't, don't be harassed by that. That thing's going to be over in just a minute. You're going to blink your eye in a, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Who I feel like preaching in here so bad. I, I feel like somebody is right on the edge of a breakthrough. Don't you let nobody talk you out of your deliverance. Don't you let nobody talk you out of your breakthrough. Don't you let your... Whatever you got to do, learn how to encourage yourself. David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Now, you can't really appreciate that unless you've ever dealt with discouragement. The definition, I'm going to give it to you as in, in, in Intrinsic, I can barely say this, intrinsic value of his definition. Did I do all right on that? Get nervous with them big words, mama. <laughs> Discouragement means this, that you have lost the ability to control fear in your life. We need another night next year. I don't have time to go into it, but some of you have lost the ability to control fear in your life, and you're intimidated and fearful about stuff that probably won't even happen. Let me take it a step further. Some people are addicted to fear. addicted to pain. They don't feel good about themselves unless they got somebody abusing them verbally or physically. They feel like they got to be there to keep them together and the whole time you are addicted to pain. Addicted to defeat. Did you know that you could get addicted to defeat? Did you know that you can live in a place of grieving and mourning for so long that you take it upon your mental disposition? That you literally wake up looking for pain? Some of you heroin addicts know what I'm talking about. I got a brother right now who's almost a year clean from heroin. And he told me, he said, Wes, I would get so sick. If I didn't wake up sick, I felt like something was wrong, I would go get me some more hair on. Let me tell you something. You can get to the place in your life that you live such a low standard of life that all your expectation diminishes. That you, you live like that and you just accept the fact that this is all God has for me. You adapt to what is going on in your life and God said, I never told you that was for you. Can y'all just let me talk? I'm so far off my notes, but I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. There's a, there's a terminology that psychiatrists use called dysfunctional thinking. Anybody familiar with that terminology? Dysfunctional thinking is when you have lived with an issue so long in your life that you begin to take ownership of it. Like people with cancer, 
You hear him say stuff like, well, I got to go to treatment and treat my cancer. Nobody said that was your cancer. Who told you that belonged to you? Why are you putting your name on that? Come on, Cynthia. My addiction. Who said that was your addiction? Why are you taking ownership of something that don't have your name on it? Last time I read in my Bible, I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I come, blessed when I go. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I got favor all over my life. You can't do nothing about the favor on my life, and can't nobody else do nothing about the favor on your life. Let the devil know, baby, he's about to do a new thing in me. Touch two or three people next to you and say, he's about to do a new thing in me. And then just tell them, say, welcome to the new me. Matter of fact, give him 60 seconds of praise right here. Just open up your mouth and tell him thank you. He didn't have to bring you out. He didn't have to deliver you. Come on, give him 60 seconds of praise and let the devil know, I got victory in my sleep, devil. I got victory when I come and when I go. You can't do I'm trying to just run through some stuff here because there's just so much in here that I can't get to it. He said, he said, watch it. He says, I will even make a road in the wilderness. He says, and rivers in the desert. The beast. I want to deal with that beast just for a minute. Anybody ever been addicted to crack? It's a beast. It's a demon. When you look up the word beast right here in the scripture, he said, even the beast will honor me. Even the beast will honor me. The monsters. Remember when you was a little kid, you scared of monsters at night? What kind of monsters you scared of right now? What are you scared of right now? What's intimidating you? What kind of conversations do you have with yourself at night? I'm not interested in what you tell me or anybody else. I'm talking about what do you say to you? What do you think about you? He said, the beast will honor me. Let me tell you something, every demonic force in your life that has kept you held up and hemmed up is going to honor God tonight. I wish some demon in here would ask me to show me his God, my God. I'll show him in a minute, baby. My, my God will show up in a minute right now. Don't make me call my daddy. You remember when you was going in trouble in elementary school, say, baby, don't make me call my daddy. My mama come down here. Some of the times the mamas are worse than the daddies. You make my mama mad. You do something to her kids, he be coming down there in her pumps. When she's done knocking you to the floor, she'll pull her heels off and start beating you with him. You hear me? He says, the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostrich, because I give waters in the wilderness. Some of you are in a wilderness place right now in your life, and I'm going to pray with you in a few minutes before I end this. You're in a wilderness place in your life right now, but God said to tell you, he sent me all the way from Nashville to let you know that he's going to give you just what you need in this wilderness. Don't you be worried about people on the right, people on the left. Don't let people get in your ear. Let me tell you something. you got to learn to ride solo in this season of your life. 
You don't have to have nobody riding with you. It just look like you got some friends. We know you all right. We know nobody likes you. Just ride it out. So I give rivers in the desert to give drink to my people. He says, and I want you to hear this right now. This is a word for you right now. He said, my chosen. I need, I need five women in here that know you fine and good looking. Run up here real quick. I want to show y'all something. Turn around. Y'all are beautiful too. Y'all are fine as fine as wine. Sure ain't a few other you in here that's, that's conv convinced. Y'all seen this show on TV, The Bachelor? He said, my chosen. Let me tell you what's so good about being chosen. Is when you're chosen, it means that God had options. See, I got options right here. I pray that y'all ain't got no husbands out here to beat me up. Ooh. Now, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stay in the middle, and then you six move to the side. Move to the side. Now, if I chose her, and she was the only one in the lineup, if these other pretty girls weren't there, and I chose her, that would be good. Y'all come together. But if I chose her with six other ones in the lineup, see, now I got options. I wish I had time to preach on options. See, you have to understand and Validify yourself to understand that you were chosen, not because he didn't have options, but he chose you out of everybody in the world. You still alive, you still got favor, you still got blessings, you still have the activity of your limbs, you still have your right mind, you still have your peace. You got and drove yourself to the service tonight, walked yourself in here just as fine as you can be. It ain't because he didn't have no option. He chose you. Y'all give it up for the pretty women in the house. Chose me. You didn't have to choose me. Think about all the people that you went to school with that ain't no more longer here. Think about the people you passed the crack pipe with. He chose me. He didn't have to do nothing for West Morgan. Who, who am I? And that alone should be an indicator to you and how special and how powerful your life can be. Let 
me get up in the morning and go get yourself something cute to put on. You ain't got to have no bunch of money. Go down to the Goodwill. Take it down to the alterations. Get it cut up just right. Get the musky smell out of it. And dress for success. Because it's the brand new me. I have this treasure in this earthen vessel. There's a good thing coming out of me. God is about to do a new thing in my life. I know you've been looking at my life for a long time. And you think I ain't going to ever come out of this situation. But I have this treasure in an earthen vessel. He's about to manifest himself in me. I feel like Bishop Blake for a minute right here. Can I preach to you for just a minute? Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I have this new thing that's about to spring forth from my life. If you like the way I look right now, you better take a picture. Because just in a minute, there's about to be a behold. There's about to be a suddenly. God is about to do a new, a new thing. Watch out for this new West. Watch out for this new me. I got new favor. It's a new season in my life. I'm blessed. Take about 30 seconds and open up your mouth and give him a praise in here. If you know God's about to do the impossible in your life, he's about to break down some jail cells. He's about to give you your joy back. He's about to give you your sanity back. I need somebody. Listen, let me tell you something. I told him the other day, I said, baby, you ain't got to celebrate me on my birthday. I'll go down to the market and buy my own birthday cake mix. I'll make my own birthday cake. Put my own colors that I like on my ice in it. Put me a candle. Blow it out and make a wish. But if you think I'm going to wait on you to celebrate what God is doing in my life, you got the wrong one. I cried too long to be sad. I cried too long to be unhappy. I cried too long to be worried worried about people who will never make up their mind about me. I got a plane to catch, but I got to tell you one more thing. I'm going to let you go. If you need a miracle, come on up here real quick. I want to pray with you anyway. That's it. Come on, just pull your hand up. Just begin to bless him for it. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time, growing up a pastor's kid, in a small town, in a newspaper all the time, arrested for this, arrested for that. They'd bring newspaper clippings into my dad's office before he would 
do his Sunday morning services. And they would tell my dad, why you keep this boy on? Why, I mean, why are you keeping this boy around? You got to cut him off. He's ruining your ministry. He's hurting your ministry. I'm so grateful that my father understood that ministry started at home, not the church. When I grew up, I had, I had people talk about me. I mean, just, you know, we got all these secular critics in the world, TV shows and everything, but you can't find no better critics than the critics in the church. I thank God that we are getting better in, this, in the church. Churches like this church right here are reaching out to people, and we don't judge you by what you look like. I never played ball in my life. I played around, you know, I, you know, in the park, in the park, and a little street basketball stuff like that. Now you don't want to see me playing basketball. <laughs> I never was, but I boxed Golden Gloves, and I never really got into ball. But my son started playing ball, and I, I love him so much. Of course, my son Adarius, he's over there. I don't know where he is anyway. He played basketball too, but I never paid attention to basketball until I was a little old in life and I started seeing my sons play. And I started reading that scripture that I quoted earlier, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Though, though an army camp around me, I shall, my heart shall not fear. Um, you remember that, that, that scripture I said earlier. And the Lord spoke something so powerful to me, Brother Ron. I was watching my boy play a basketball game one night. And he was playing, and he's a tall kid. I don't know where he got his height from. I had to check things out. Was, was, <laughs> the milkman done been by the house again. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm sorry. I was watching him play ball one night, and I was thinking about that script, and it just, God just dropped it in my spirit. Stay with me and catch this real quick. God dropped it in my spirit. I was watching them, him play, and I was like, man, these guys were fouling him. Every time he would get ready to make a shot, they would foul him, and, and they just kept on fouling him, kept on fouling him. But they didn't realize, and, I, and again, I didn't know a lot about ball, so I was wrapping my mind around this, but they didn't realize that the more they fouled him, that the referee is going at some point step in. And the Lord took me to the scripture where he says, and the peace of God shall rule and reign in your heart. Now, if you translate rule and reign, it's a translated as an umpire or a referee. And the peace of God shall step in as a referee And I was thinking about this, and it was so powerful what God brought to my attention. And I've been teaching this for a long time. But God showed me, he said, he says, the fouling, all that stuff that's going on in your life is just so that I can step in and show them that they're about to be penalized. I said, that's great, that's great, that's great. But I got to a place in my life growing up in church where people judge me so much that I said, God, you know, they've seen me cry for so long. They've seen me in and out of jail and in and out of rehab centers and losing homes and losing families. I said, God, can you just show them one time? Bless me in the presence of my enemies. And he took me to the game, and the referee stepped in the game, and I'm almost done. The referee stepped in the game, and he, he called, he blew the whistle. God is about to bless you in front of some people who said you would never be nothing. People who always counted you out, God's going to bless you right in the front of them. There are some family members that are going to be blown away when they see you come out of this season. He took me to the game. He said, watch this. He said, watch your son. He, he took 
my son to the game. First of all, what he did as a referee, and he said, this is what I'm going to do in some people's lives tonight. I'm going to allow the referee of peace to step into their life. He said the first thing the referee does is he stops the clock. I feel another preach on me here in just a second. He said he stops the clock so that you can catch your breath. See, some of you have been going through so much hell in your life, all you need is just a pause just to catch your breath. He watched, I watched him, and he took my son over there to the three free throw line. He says, not only do I stop the clock, but I'm going to give him a free throw. Stops the clock. I need you to pay attention to this because it's a word for some of you tonight. He stopped the clock. Gave him a free throw. But the sweetest part about it is the very ones that was fouling him had to stand in front of him. And you know, my boy, he got swag. He was doing, you know, you know how them free throwers do. They, they just feel themselves. You know, they bounce that ball and toss it a little bit. You know, they bounce it. Because, you know, you know you can do some things when you got the clock stops. You know, he bounced that ball and he'd throw it up like this. And right before he'd shoot, he would throw his shoulders like this. God said, I'm not only going to stop the clock. I'm going to give you a free throw. I'm going to bless you in front of your enemies. And I'm going to give you your swag back. I'll tell you something, there's a miracle in your life that the enemy's been trying to stop. There's a miracle that's coming out of your mess. All this mess you've been through, God told me to tell you, don't waste your pain. <laughs> Lift your hands. All kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't even want, I want to tell your business. But God said, everything that the enemy has stolen from you, Now, listen, Jesus taught this. Now, I want to, many, this is not just for her, this is for everybody, but Jesus taught this. He said, if you would identify the enemy, he said, if you point out who stole from you, show me who did it. He says, I'll make him return it to you seven times. And this is not just a word from my sister right here, although it is a very, very pointed word to you, but I want everybody to listen to this. I want you to go home tonight, and at your leisure, I want you to list every thief in your life. Whatever you have lost in your life, I want you to identify the thief, and I want you to write it down. You got a mirror where you stay? You got some lipstick? Write the thief's name on your mirror. And every morning, you and your roommate go in there and say, I declare you will give me back every time, everything you stole from me seven times. I want it all back. And not only don't, don't give me back just seven times, but put it back where you got it from. I cannot tell you what kind of blessing it is for me to come and be part of something like this. So last night and tonight, Brother Ron, I cried the first part of the service because I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Three major miracles God did in my life. First of all, he didn't let me die in some hotel and have my kids find out about it later. 
Secondly, he didn't let me stay incarcerated. I had a brother, brother, I had a good, a good friend of mine. He was a drug dealer. We, we dealt cocaine so much. Man, we dealt so much cocaine in Nashville. We would literally go set up in Motel 6, and we would put all our dope in one room, and we would party in the other room, and we would just deal out all weekends. We've been to Mexico. I hope there ain't no police in here. I'm, 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 I'm clear. And I told my buddy, and, and I want to just talk to you. You know, I could lay hands and pray for you, and I want to do that. I want to lead you through the sin of spirit, but I want you to hear my heart. Bro, you done made it through too much, bro. I told my good friend, good, good dude, good heart. He started dealing dope when he was 18 years old. His daddy loved him when he was just a kid. It's the only way he knew how to make money. He's deal dope. I told him, I said, man, stop. That chapter is over in your life. For you to make it through it alive and not be incarcerated. And you I know some of y'all going through lonely times right now because you're sitting in some kind of home getting your life straight. But honey, that is nothing in comparison to what could have happened. We are miracles. Miracles. I told him, I said, man, give it up. You did that. Give your testimony. Tell him how much of a gangster you was, but don't do it no more. And he wouldn't listen to me. He ended up right back in prison. I want to tell you something tonight. Your future is worth something. Your destiny is worth something. If God delivered you from something, have enough sense to not go back to it. Some of you are on the crest of something amazing in your life. Amazing. Don't you dare let nobody take any kind of stroll out of your stride. You keep walking. You keep marching. If you're going through some stuff, cry it out, ride it out. Don't you let no sympathetic spirit get on you and make you feel like you're going to quit, get, brace your shoulders. Get some grit in your mouth. I've said it for years. Addicts are some of the most genius people in the world. Look, somebody said, we are. They're the only people who can wake up in the morning with barely two pennies to rub together and end up at the end of the day with a $10,000 high. It's true. And then we get saved and we just going to sit back and wait on Jesus to drop something out the sky for us. Get that same creativity that you had for going to get high for Jesus Christ and snatch somebody out of hell. Everybody in this building right now, you say, you know what? Maybe some of you say, I want to give my heart to the Lord. This is the first thing I've heard about Jesus, or this, I've been hearing about it, I want to give my heart to the Lord. Maybe that's you. But also for some of you in this building right now, says, you know what? I gave my heart to the Lord, but I've been slipping and sliding. It's time for me to rededicate my heart to the Lord and get this thing straight so I can be a blessing to my children and my children's children and my family and my church. God has afforded you an opportunity that some did not get. If you're one of those people, I want you to grab your neighbor's hand right now. I want you to follow me as I pray this prayer. God knows who you are. Huge destiny over your life. Repeat after me as I pray this prayer. Father God, I'm so grateful that you have preserved my life. You have kept me from the snare of the enemy. And I thank you for favor and blessings. 
even when I was dead in my trespasses. I thank you for loving me with an unconditional love, an unwavering love. I ask you right now to take full control of my life. Help me in this journey of life. Help me make quality decisions for my life. I seek your guidance right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come right now. Give me power. Give me dunamis power to overcome the enemy and every assignment that the enemy has lost against me. I thank you right now that you are Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and I ask you to be my guidance. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Now when you're done right now saying that, throw those hands up and just begin to thank God right now for salvation all over this building. God, I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for every generational curse that's broken in the name of Jesus. I declare that it is done right now in the name of Jesus. Every generational curse is broken right now in the name of Jesus. I come against every generational curse right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, I serve you eviction notice right now. You must depart in the name of Jesus. Everything that you have formed against my sister shall be turned around and put in her hand against the enemy and about the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus I declare freedom in the name of Jesus I declare triumph in the name of Jesus I declare victory in the name of Jesus Satan loose my sister right now in the name of Jesus loose my brother in the name of Jesus loose my sister loose my sister I need somebody to give him praise in here right now I feel a surge of the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus I declare every curse is broken. Every work of the enemy, every hex, every curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Everything is broken in the name of Jesus. You shall walk in victory. You shall walk in victory. Somebody shout victory in here right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare everything is broken over your life. The enemy has to flee from your house. I break every generational curse. Every generational curse. Loose my brother in the name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated right now. Satan, you are defeated right now. Bless my sister from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Bless my sister right now. A fresh anointing over my sister in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and give him a praise in here. Come on, open up your mouth and let the devil know I got victory. I got my joy back. I got my stuff back in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lift your hands all over the building. Shackles are falling off. Old mindsets are falling off. In the name of Jesus, I release a fresh anointing over every person in this room right now. If you believe it, say, I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, give him a praise one more time. I'm done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. We're going we're gonna to release you right in a few seconds. So. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is here in this place. Change is falling off right now. 
But we're here to let you know all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. Amen. It is done. In Jesus' name. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Amen. Let's give this great man of God a hand praise. Hallelujah. He preached his heart out tonight, and we thank God for him. Now, let's give Jesus a hand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. I just want to share with you before we get ready to go, this man has product out there. We, he has tapes he's already shared about. And we want you to take advantage of it and so you can take these things home with you. I've been informed that both nights you'll be able to call to the bookstore and get them when you want those, okay? So just call to the church. Amen. So that is a blessing, amen. We also have uh, our books, Understanding Christian Drug and Alcohol Recovery, and my latest book is Recovery Towers, and my wife's book, Understanding Codependency, and, and so take advantage of those things. Look, we thank God for you. It's not by accident that you were here tonight. Amen. God is doing a new thing in you. So watch this. Even though you may look in the mirror and you say, you need to start walking like it. You need to start talking like it. You need to put Jesus on your lips in the morning, in the noonday, in the evening time, when you go to bed. You need to believe that you believe that you believe that God is changing your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I know and believe in my heart there's some soldiers and some soldierettes coming up out of here. Amen? Amen. You're going to go home and that light going to shine and people going to look at you and say, what happened? Amen? And you're just going to look to the Lord and say, yes, yes, Lord. It was only Jesus. Let your light so shine before men. Amen? Don't be afraid. You're going to be in some spots where, watch this. The Lord is putting it on my, just when you get ready to go and eat, you're going to bow your head. You're going to want to pray over your food, but you're going to be worried about the people around you. You know what you do? Bow your head. Amen. Bow your head. You pray to that God that is saving your life and giving you a new life. Our bishop has a saying. I see you in the future, and you look much better than you do right now. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, I see you in the future, and you look much better than you do right now. All heads bowed, all heads bowed. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this time. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the new us. And we thank you, Father God. Father God, we lift up the man of God. We pray that you continue to bless him and his family. Father God, let him carry this message around the world, Father God. And we will give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Now, watch over these that are here. You know what? The Lord is putting it on my heart. There's somebody here that may... We know a lot of homes came in here tonight. But there's somebody that came in here off the street, and you just may be looking for a place to stay. There are some people here that specialize in helping people. So I need for you to come down here right now. If you don't have a place to stay, you've been living on the street, you tired of living on the street, you need a place to stay. I know there are some ladies here, Rochelle, Lanita, Regina, between those three ladies, they got over 20 homes where they take people in. Praise the Lord, my sister. Here she is right here. 
Regina, Rochelle, Lenita, can you please somebody come down here and see this young lady? And even if you don't have a spot, I know you can move them over to uh, Lenita's or Regina's. Amen. And we can help her get off the street. Look at God. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for all you're doing. And Wes is going to be in the back signing and greeting you. So, Father God, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And prosperity. And prosperity. It's a new day, it's a new day, fresh and and it's flowing my way, it's flowing my way. 